and then right up above we have a nerve. There's a tiny little nerve right there and another, you can compare this as nerve and this is smooth muscle. And actually, another thing, I, one of my professors, Dr. Rowe, taught me lots and lots of histology and he liked to teach triads and he said that there, whenever you see pink bundles of, of spindle cells in the human body, they're one of three things. Number one, they're dense regular connective tissue or they're made of, of dense collagen. And so even though this isn't really a bundle, you can see this dense pink here, that's collagen, like the dermis is made of. Number two, they're nerve. This is nerve right here, and you can see it's nerve lined by this little layer of perineurium on the outside. And it's a little hard to tell nerves when they're small. When they're bigger, it gets easy to see. We'll look at some bigger ones in a minute. And then over here, this is smooth muscle, erector pili. The cells have more of a kind of cigar-shaped nucleus. The cytoplasm has a little bit different color. So you can see right here, collagen, nerve, smooth muscle, all in one picture. Uh, the other thing we'll look at here, we have uh, this structure which is a pink bundle. And remember we talked about pink bundles can be nerve, smooth muscle, or uh, dense regular connective tissue like you'd see in the tendon or fascia. Um, and this, in this case, it's nerve. And nerve is kind of a little bit wavy. It kind of undulates back and forth. And when you look closer, you can see right there, this little line in the middle, that's actually an axon. And those little bubbles around it are where the myelin normally resides. Let's see if we can get that into better focus. So we're only seeing it just very focally. So that little pink line there is the axon. So anyway, that little, that little space of white is where, where myelin was that's now washed out. So only in like kind of larger, deeper nerves do you really see much myelin. Up, up near the surface of the skin, we don't usually see myelinated nerves. We only see um, uh, unmyelinated most of the time microscopically. Okay, here is another example of a kind of larger nerve from down probably in the subcutis, a deeper nerve, and it's a close-up view. And right here, you can see the axon. This pink line is running, uh, we're kind of looking at a longitudinal rather than a cross-sectional view of the nerve. And so you can see an axon. Here's another one down here and another one here. Here's another one over here. So the axon is pink and it's got the white areas around it. That's myelin. Those were areas of myelin around the nerve and the myelin is made of lipid and so it washes out and dissolves during a tissue processing and leaves a clear space just like fat cells or the bubbles and the, the vacuoles and sebacites. All of those things are lipid based and they dissolve. Okay, and um, so this is really helpful. This only really works in bigger nerves. The little tiny nerves that you see in the dermis don't usually have much myelin, and so you don't tend to see these structures. But this is a nice way to recognize nerve by seeing the, the axon with the myelin around it. And look at these lines. See these funny little kind of striped lines? They almost look like a spine with little ribs coming off of it. So when I first noticed these, um, uh, I assumed that they were maybe uh, nodes of Ron VA that I had learned about in med school. But my understanding is that those are actually too small to see easily with light microscopy. You have to see, you know, electron microscopy or something. And I don't really do electron microscopy in my practice. But um, actually, what some friends on, uh, on Twitter actually pointed out to me years ago now, that these are actually called... Um, Myelin incisures or Schmidt Lanterman incisures, if you like eponyms. And the idea of what these are is actually really quite cool. Remember, it's the Schwann cells, which are what these nuclei are here, probably in the background. The Schwann cells, their job is to wrap the nerve in myelin, okay? But Schwann cells have to have cytoplasm that reaches out and stretches around the nerve and kind of wraps in a layer to, to build that myelin. But somehow the cytoplasm, as it, as it wraps around here, has to come back out and hook up to the nucleus of the Schwann cell. And this is like kind of the exit area where the, the layers of, of cytoplasm from the Schwann cell kind of escape from the nerve and come back to the Schwann cell nucleus. I don't know if I'm explaining that, um, nicely or not, but if you just Google Schmidt Lanterman incisures, there are some really nice pictures and diagrams, which I didn't include here for the sake of copyright issues, uh, but you can easily find them on Google. And it shows a nice, uh, nice schematic diagram to help you visualize what's happening here. So I thought that was so cool, but it's a, it's a pretty structure to look at. And it's also nice because once you see that, you know, this is a nerve. Okay. If you have any doubt, is this pink bundle of spindled things, a, a nerve or smooth muscle or something else? Once you see these, you know, it's a nerve. And I've got other videos about nerve uh, versus smooth muscle, and you can go check those out. All right. So I hope you enjoy that myelin incisures. Here, let's uh, take a minute to look at a big nerve, and this is not actually from skin, this is from deep soft tissue, but just to demonstrate what nerves look like. This is a large nerve made of multiple nerve bundles. You can see each of these pink bundles is a, is a nerve bundle all packed together.
and they're made of these spindled cells that are running uh, together in parallel. And again, those are Schwann cells that are kind of uh, protecting and wrapping around each individual nerve fiber. Nerves tend to get a little bit undulating and wavy, but but beware that, that they're not the only thing that's wavy. Actually, tendon and other fibrous tissue tends to be wavy as well. But that's an, a large kind of thick nerve. We don't usually see nerves like this in normal skin. This is from deeper in soft tissue. And then I think one last uh, structure to show that we didn't really cover is uh, this is a fat, subcutaneous fat. And here in the fat is a very large tumor. Um, this was a, a sarcoma, actually. We're not going to talk about that in this video. But the reason I'm showing this is that down at the very bottom of the fat, where the fat the, of the subcutis uh, runs into the muscle underneath, you have this thick layer of pink stuff. This is dense regular connective tissue, dense collagen. And this is called the fascia. Tendon, fascia, and ligament all look more or less identical microscopically. It just depends on where exactly it's from. But what it's made of is really thick, dense, compact bundles of collagen. And those, those dark stripes there, that's artifact that's folding from when we cut the tissue. Sometimes the tissue cuts don't fold, don't lay out perfectly flat and we get little folds in it. So, um, sorry, we try to avoid that, but it's impossible sometimes on big specimens. And here, if you look at higher power, this is what um, dense, regular connective tissue looks like. If you cut it cross-sectionally, the, the fibroblasts look like they're little tiny round nuclei. But if you cut it like here, uh, in longitudinal section, you can see that the fibroblasts actually stretch out and are kind of elongated. And then there's dense pink stuff in between, and that's the collagen, collagen type one. So a lot of times people confuse this with smooth muscle, but I think the key is that if you recognize, and it's a little hard to do on a video, but if you recognize that the, um, the pink bundles are actually bundles of collagen outside of the cell. And under a microscope, you can kind of see they, they're refractile a little bit. They kind of move in and out of the tissue if you kind of move your condenser up and down. Maybe we can try that and see if it'll work. Not really. Oh, there, I guess there, you can kind of see that they kind of move in and out of focus and have these cracks in between them. So those are collagen bundles and collagen is an extracellular matrix protein. So it's outside of the cell. So these are fibroblasts that are making all this pink collagen and pushing them outside of the cell uh, as opposed to smooth muscle, which looks pink because it's filled with contractile proteins. So those are intracytoplasmic proteins. It takes a little bit of practice, but eventually you can kind of learn to tell them apart. But I think that's important. And I, and I find that even at the resident and sometimes higher levels, people still sometimes struggle with telling apart um, tendon or fascia from muscle. So if you struggle with that as a medical student, don't feel bad, you're not alone. The other thing that's kind of interesting here is that you can see coming right off of the bone, this dense pink layer, this is dense regular connective tissue. And again, I told you earlier that dense regular connective tissue is either fascia, tendon or ligament. And here you can see that it's actually connecting, this big band of it right here is connecting broadly to the bone. So if that on the other side, which we can't see here, if it hooks up to a muscle, then this would be a tendon. If on the other side it hooks up to a bone, it would be a ligament. So ligament and tendon and fascia look very similar at high power and really it's kind of the context that you find them in that you can tell them apart. Um, so that's a nice example of a, probably of a tendon in this case that's hooking up to one of the muscles that allow you to contract or extend your fingers, to flex or extend your fingers.